Before we get started with today's video, I want to let you know I will now be doing one-on-one -on -one Blender tutoring. If there's something you'd like to learn in Blender or want someone to teach you the basics personally, I'm your guy. Not only will I teach you, but I'll also be recording the session. That way, if you forget anything I taught you, you can just refer to the video I sent you after the lesson is done. Message me at my Instagram at DeusXVFX for pricing and inquiries. Now let's get started with the tutorial. Hi, this is Deus Ex VFX, and today I'm going to teach you how to create an abstract animation in Blender. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to hold Shift A to add an object, or we can just go up here to add, and we're going to go to Mesh, and we're going to click UV Sphere. And after we've done that, we can just right click and click Shade Smooth. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Add Modifier, and then we're going to add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Just add that up to three and now we're going to add a displace modifier so we go over to add modifier click displace and it's going to increase in size and all we have to do is just click new on the displace modifier and now we have to add a texture to displace the geometry so we go down here to texture properties and we switch the type from image or movie to wood and then we go back to modifier properties and we're going to move the subdivision surface below the displace so that smooths it out like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the coordinates. So we're going to take it from local to object. And then we're going to go up here to add. And we're going to add an empty. I'm going to add a sphere. Then we're going to click on our shape. We're going to use this eyedropper tool and we're going to click on the empty that we just added. There, and now our empty controls the displacement of the geometry. So now we're gonna create an animation. So we're gonna bring up our timeline, and then we're gonna click I to insert a keyframe. And now I'm gonna have my next keyframe at about 100 frames in. So I'm gonna click I again. And when I go to the beginning, you'll notice nothing's happened yet because I haven't changed any of the properties. So I'm gonna go back to 100 frames in, and I'm going to change the x-axis from 0 meters to 2. And I have to make sure that this is clicked so you'll know it's working when it's yellow. And now when I play it, you'll notice it'll start up slow and then end slowly. We don't want that. So with these two selected, we're going to right click on the timeline and we're going to click interpolation mode or we're going to go under interpolation mode and then click linear. Now it starts and ends at the same speed. So I'm gonna shrink the timeline now to 100 frames because that's what we're working within. And this is what our first frame looks like. So I'm gonna try and find a frame within these 100 frames that looks about the exact same so that we can loop it. All right, so that frame works. So we're gonna go 32 frames in and I'm gonna limit this actually to 31 frames and I'll explain in a moment. So the reason I shrunk the timeline to 31 frames instead of 32 is because 32 frames in looks almost identical to the first frame. And if we want it to loop properly, we have to go backwards one frame because once it loops, our first frame is going to end up also being the last frame. It doesn't really make sense when I explain it, but if you see it in motion, you'll see that it works properly. So now we have our animation, now let's just add the dressing. So I'm gonna to change to rendered view and I'm going to click cycles. I use experimental and I use GPU. And we're gonna change the lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring the lighting all the way down. And because my cursor is at the world origin, that red and white circle, whenever I place any objects, it'll go to where the cursor is. And if your cursor isn't there, then you can just click object, snap, cursor to world origin. And I'm going to add a light. I'm gonna add a point light. And you can't see it right now because our shape doesn't have a material that lets you see through it. So let's add a material. I'm going to increase the transmission there. Now we can actually see through it. And I'm also going to decrease the roughness just to give it a really interesting look. And I don't have a camera in my scene, so I'm going to go to add camera. 
click on the camera button. I'm going to change the aspect ratio because I like to post on Instagram and I don't want it to be in HD aspect ratio. So to do that, I just go here. I'm going to do 2000 by 2000, a square. And now I'm going to move the camera and try and find a spot that looks nice. And I'm also going to adjust the light just to make it a little bit brighter. And you can have some fun, change the colors, you know, make it look however you want. And let's see how it looks. Kind of hard for us to see on the timeline, so I'm going to render it for us so we can see how good it looks. Before doing that, I'm going to adjust a few things. Since it's an animation, we want to go down over to Output Properties and we want to add a place for our animation to go to. So I'm going to click on this file and I'm going to click on the folder that I'm using and I'm going to call it Animation 2. Then I'm going to select the folder and accept. Last thing we have to do is go over to Render Properties and select something lower than 4000. That would take a very long time. So I'm going to do 250. And denoising within the actual render itself actually takes a lot longer, so I'm going to unclick denoise and I'm going to do it in the compositing stage. I'll show you how to do that now. So we're going to go up to here, compositing, and we're going to select use nodes. I'm going to move this over a little bit and I'm going to add something. So I'm going to go to output and then viewer. Then I'm going to go over to View Layer Properties and select Denoising. Now we have denoising data that we can play with. So I'm going to go back to Add, go to Filter, Denoise, drop it in there, and connect the denoising normal to the normal and the albedo to the albedo. And then lastly, I'm just going to connect this to this. There. And now just to see how it looks, I'm going to click that button and then it'll show us what the first frame looks like or the frame that you were hovering over. There, it completely got rid of all the noise in the render. Now that we know it looks good, now we can feel confident in clicking render. One more thing before we start rendering, I'm going to go back to solid mode and I'm just going to show you something. If you click on their shape here and then you go down to texture, there's actually a few different textures that you can choose from. I just chose wood because I knew how to loop wood, uh, loop it as in the video sense, but there are a bunch of different ones for different types of looks. So there's this, got a cool look there, magic, marble, yeah, lots of different styles. So, you know, don't feel limited by just what I showed you in the video, you know, try different things out and uh, yeah, okay, now it's time to render. And now that it's done rendering, you can bring it into your editing software of choice. I use DaVinci Resolve. And now I just go to the file where I exported the animation to animation 2 and I have to change the format style because this is an HD and I want to change it to 2000 by 2000 so I'm just gonna go here format custom create then I'm gonna redrag in the video And now I'm going to copy and paste it. So control C is to copy and then paste, 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 paste. And now you have a looping animation. Make sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. Subscribe if you want more content like this. 
Make sure to follow me on my Instagram at DeosXVFX or my personal Conrad underscore hog. I'm going to plug everything, honestly. I have a TikTok too, uh, at DeosXVFX as well. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one Blender lessons, message me on my Instagram at DeosXVFX. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.